Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at docking a Nintendo 3DS to the 30-pin connector of an old iPod Hi-Fi speaker system from Apple and see if we can get the three main features, that of charging, listening to music, and navigating the tracks with this remote. Now originally I wanted to do this with the Nintendo Switch, but that's not ready for prime time yet. Nintendo still needs to add a couple of features before we can film that video. But it did get me thinking about the 3DS. Now I owned one of these about 10 years ago, and I had it for about a year, and I could not remember if it had an MP3 player in it or not. So I looked it up and it does, so great. I knew it had a headphone jack, but I wasn't sure if it supported inline remotes. And there wasn't a lot of information on the web about this, but I did a little research and I found a third party pair of headphones for the 3DS that Nintendo had signed off on that supported a one button inline remote control that supposedly would stop and start the tracks and navigate them. And I was like, one button remote? That doesn't really sound like Apple's implementation, but at least the 3DS supported inline remotes. Because if it didn't, if it was just like a TRS jack, then we wouldn't even be making this video. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. We'll go from there. And then the third thing is charging. Uh, I thought it had a mini USB connector on the back for charging, and it turns out it doesn't. It's a proprietary connector, but it does look a lot like mini USB. However, there are third-party cables that you can plug into this proprietary connector, and then they have a USB-A connector on the other end that you can plug into your power source, and they were relatively inexpensive on Amazon, so I was like, great, I ordered one of those. A friend of mine has a couple of these 3DSs, and he lent me one for this video. So, let's see if we can get this to work properly with the iPod Hi-Fi. Okay, so a few weeks ago I made a video on connecting a USB-C iPad to the iPod Hi-Fi here. And some of my viewers wanted to get a little more detail about how all the cables and adapters are hooked together. I'd essentially just had it pre-assembled when I made that video. So I'm going to do that here. And I know some of you are here because we have a Nintendo product and you probably haven't watched the USB-C iPad video as well. So, this speaker system came out in 2006. It has a 30-pin adapter here for your iPod. You just plug it in right there. You could listen to some music. You could charge it. You could navigate the tracks with this remote. And then in 2012, when Apple switched over to Lightning, they had an adapter you could plug into this so you could continue to use it with iPhones and iPod Touches. The same time that that adapter came out, another company called Cable Jive came out with this adapter for the 30-pin connector. And instead of uh, adapting it to Lightning, which is proprietary, it actually adapts it to something more standard. So we've got a female USB-A port here for power, a female TRRS jack here for audio and remote controls. So what I'm going to do first here is plug in just a little USB extension cable that's right angle. So it'll make it look a little more uh, aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to put that right in here. And then I've got a TRRS cable here, right angle again, that I'm going to plug in right next to it. And then the other thing we have to worry about is the fact that these old speaker docks power the devices over the FireWire pin, because that was the iPod's roots in FireWire. And of course everything now is USB, so we need another adapter that will actually reroute the power from the FireWire pin to the USB pin. And that's what this is here. It's called the Skosh dock. And it's basically just a 30 pin pass through. And it fits inside the universal dock shape, which is what's here on the speaker. And itself is a universal dock shape. And then these were just basically like a big oval. And then you put these white adapters in to shrink it down to fit to whatever your device was to make it fit snugly. Now, Apple, of course, didn't make an adapter for the Dock Boss 5, but I found that the number 19 adapter for the iPhone 4 and 4S works really well with the Dock Boss 5 for making it sturdy and not loose in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in here, just like that. And then we'll plug the entire thing into the 30-pin universal dock, just like that. And now we're ready to proceed, so let me go get the 3DS and we'll continue this. Okay, so I have the 3DS set up now. The headphone jack is right here on the front, and to avoid the cable coming out this way, I've got another uh, 
right angle extension here, which runs around the side. It's not perfect, but it definitely cleans it up a little bit than if it was just pointing straight out and dangling down. So let's pull out the remote and see if we can get some sound. Next song. Yeah, everything's looking good. Let's stop it. And we'll start it back up. And let's go back a couple songs. Yeah, it's working great. All the controls work with it. Turn the volume up on the speaker. Turn it down. Now you may notice something, and that is the charge light is not on. And what I found out is this. With the USB cable that you can get for this that plugs into the proprietary power connector, it will charge fine out of this adapter here. It can charge all the way from dead to full. The problem is, is that it interferes with the remote controls. I don't know why. I've not experienced that before with anything else I've tested with this speaker system. I had a really cheap version of that cable and I sent it back and got a nicer quality one and they both have the same problem. If I plug that cable into like a little iPhone wall adapter or um, I use just the Nintendo AC adapter with it, there's no interference with the remote controls. But when I use the USB one and I'm pulling the power out of this, it just does not act consistently. Which is kind of a bummer because will it work? Will it use all three of those features, charging, audio, and remote control? Yes. Will it be able to do all of them at the same time? No. You could listen to some music and charge it. You could listen to some music and navigate the tracks with the remote, but unfortunately you can't do all three out of this with it working the way that it should. So I can't completely give this a pass. Still, I think it's really cool that you could hook up the 3DS to this old speaker system and pipe the audio into it. That's easy, of course, but that the remote controls work. Um, and they work just great as long as you don't have the power in it, I think it was pretty cool. So I can't give this a complete pass, but it's, um, it's still pretty cool. So I'll just leave you with a little bit of uh, music and um, too bad you can't see the um, equalizer here in 3D because it does look pretty cool. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon. Put something in the comments if something else audio related you want me to try to test with this to see if we can get those three features to work with it. I'd love to know what you guys think. But that's all for now. Take care.